Hi everyone and welcome to January's Comfort Book Club discussion of 450 from Paddington by Agatha Christie. As always, my mum Donna's joining Hello me. Hello everyone. You always are here for the Comfort Book Club. Always a pleasure too. <laughs> <laughs> That's lovely. And I'm really excited for this discussion. Now, there are going to be spoilers, so if you don't know the plot to 450 from Paddington, I don't want to ruin the ending for you, so you can always watch this video once you've read the book, if you yeah. haven't read it already, because we will be having spoilers yes, in this discussion, obviously. but I'm really excited for oh, it. Me too. It's one of my very favourites. Yes, me yeah. too. One of my favourites of her mysteries. I love Miss Marple, and this is a Miss Marple one. And we've had a record number of contributors for this discussion. Exciting. Yes, thank you to everyone who sent in a voice message. It's going to be a fabulous discussion, so let's get going. But first yeah. things first, make sure oh, you've yeah. got your cup of tea or whatever beverage you like <laughs> to hand. We're very much in the spirit of Miss Marple We are here. today, aren't we? We've got a bit of an afternoon tea set yes. up. We've got our tea and then we made some little mini treacle tarts mm. inspired by the book. Lucy, of course, makes a demon treacle tart. Yes. <laughs> According to the boys. Exactly, anyway. they approve her roast beef and treacle tart for yes, It sounds yes. so good. Um, so we've got this to enjoy. Nice. A bit of nicely warm with a bit of clotted cream, isn't exactly. it? Exactly, yeah. yeah, which is perfect. Mm. Mm. Delicious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, so we'll enjoy finishing that off later. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> but it was actually Jason from New Zealand who inspired us to make treacle tart because he sent in a fabulous voice message listing all of the food references <laughs> in 450 <laughs> from Paddington, which was quite impressive. And treacle tart was included. So let's hear Jason's message. Hello, this is Jason from New Zealand. One of the best things about 450 from Paddington is the solidarity between Mrs. McGillicuddy, Miss Marple, and Miss Arlesborough. In a time where women are discouraged from action, it's great to read how Elspeth, Jane, and Lucy, between them, witness, believe, and solve a crime that was initially dismissed by the police as ever occurring. And did you notice how central food is in the story? Was that Agatha Christie's hint that poisoning will feature as a cause of death, I made a list of the food and drink mentioned. Cowslip wine, tea and biscuits, Spanish omelette, scones, tea cakes, treacle tart, apple meringue, Yorkshire pudding, roast beef and potatoes, gravy, egg and sardine sandwiches, mushroom soup, curry and rice, chutney syllabub, and canapes Diane. No wonder I was hungry reading the story. This is the coziest book to read as I sit by the fire with a nice tray of supper. Miranda and Donna, thank you both for the wonderful book recommendation. Oh, thank you, Jason. Yes, thank you, Jason. <laughs> I love all those domestic details mm, there in are the lot, book. There are a lot Yes, of there ones. are. Wonderful. Yeah, all the sort of housekeeping yes. and food details. Yes. Absolutely adored them. And I'm yeah. glad that you found it a cozy read. I definitely love how cosy the Miss Marple mysteries mm, are generally. And it was so nice because we heard from a few people who had never read Agatha Christie before and this was their introduction to her. And Christina sent in a message about how she overcame her fear of thrillers um, in order to read 450 from Paddington and found it a surprisingly non-scary read, I think. So let's hear from Christina. Hello, Miranda and Donna. This is Christina from Somerville, Massachusetts. I do not typically enjoy thrillers. The world seems to contain enough evil and danger after all. However, the Comfort Book Club has never disappointed, so I decided to give 450 from Paddington a go. Far from disturbing, the novel reassures. The unfortunately typical occurs. A heartless man does away with an inconvenient wife. And yet, into this seeming void of comfort, all sorts of lovely things rush in. Delicious meals, leisurely walks, and engaging conversations. I adored every moment of the book, which I read twice. Oh, thank you, Christina. Yes, thank you, Christina. 
and so glad that you ended up enjoying it and actually found it a sort of reassuring read. It's, def it's definitely a cosy, isn't it? It is. Yes, it is. yes, yes. The bad end unhappily and the yeah. good happily <laughs> is all, all good stories should. <laughs> yes, very good. <laughs> but this book was also an introduction to Agatha Christie from Faith, so let's listen to her message. Hello, my name is Faith and I am calling in from London. This is the first time I've read a full-length Agatha Christie novel, and I loved it. What was interesting to me was that this was a plot that depended, in part, on the assumptions that society makes about women. And so it was wonderful to see the underestimated Mrs. McGillicuddy, Miss Marple, and Lucy come together to solve the mystery. Lucy was a particular favorite of mine. This novel was a great introduction to Christie, and I'm looking forward to reading more of her work. Oh, thank you, Faith. Yes, that's wonderful that you enjoyed it so much. It, it is. was your first, perhaps she'd read a short story before. Maybe, but, but yes, yes yeah. I'm glad that you're inspired yes. to read more Christie afterwards. That's really good. And someone else sent in a voice message saying how much they enjoyed reading 450 from Paddington for the first time. And she was especially intrigued to read it because she often takes a train from Paddington to Bath at about 4.50. <laughs> I love that. Me too. <laughs> no murders, Hopefully no murders. <laughs> <laughs> Witnessed en route though. Um, but yeah, so this is Nicola. So let's listen to Nicola's message. Hi, I'm Nicola from Bath in England, and this is a review of the 450 from Paddington by Agatha Christie. And I fairly often travel from Bath to Paddington and Paddington to Bath, and I often get a train around 450. So I was really intrigued to read this book. And my first impression was I was charmed by the the period detail of a Paddington that no longer exists, the the porters and the individual carriages and that propelled me into the book with great fascination and I found it charming and really entertaining and the ending surprised me so thank you for the recommendation and I look forward to the discussion. Oh, thank you Nicola. Thank you Nicola. I'm glad the ending surprised you. It definitely surprised me the first time yes, I read too. it. I mean this me is a reread um, for us. Well, obviously I don't, we've read this many 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 many, many, many times. times. <laughs> uh, but I remember still the shock when I yes. first read it. I yes. think it's such a good twist. It this is. Was. Very it clever is. ending. So yes. you know, I'm glad you enjoyed that as well. And yes I love the period details too. Of it's the trains and the train stations Absolutely. at that time. It reminds me of that Flanders and Swans song about slow train, you know, with all the names of the stations as oh, they yes. go along. I think that's so evocative too. And this it in is. the same way. And the idea of porters, wouldn't it be lovely if you <laughs> still get a porter to help you? Oh, yeah. wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah but so you know. really love that when we're always I'm normally to... the porter. <laughs> <laughs> she is. And of course, we're normally both buying books, so everything weighs a ton. It's awful. Yeah, so true. <laughs> Coming back from yeah. a Journey, yes. especially <laughs> yes absolutely and that type of old-fashioned train without a corridor you know only being the single carriage is of course crucial to, to this plot, mystery isn't it? to yes. the plot yeah and Agatha Christie often used trains yeah, in her mysteries I mm. mean one of her most famous was Murder on the Orient of Express course. which yes. is almost entirely set on a train yeah and the mystery of the blue train yes, is another very good example. Yeah, yeah. She liked setting mysteries in sort of contained, closed, closed yes. environments. Yes. Um, where often then they could only have been committed by this certain group of people. Yes. And she did that so effectively. She really didn't. She did the country house idea with that, didn't she? Yes. The country house party. Which yeah. indeed you get a little bit of that, of course, in this one as well. You do, definitely. Yes, yes, a country Cra house. Yes, with Crackenthorpe. Um, and, you yeah. know, you just, it's all contained, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. Um, and all the suspicion falls on the family, which she, she subverts that expectation yes. a little bit, actually, in this book. You assume, um, because she's used this setting, 
that it's going to be kind of a member of the family uh -huh. that live in the hall. Yes. So she subverts that but expectation a little bit, yes. which is um, very clever of her. Yeah. But yes, it really is a book that evokes its time very well. Yeah. And I enjoy all the period detail. And another reader of the Comfort Book Club, Maria, also enjoyed some of the period detail to the book. So let's hear it from her. Hello Miranda, Donna and readers of the Comfort Book Club. I'm Mireia from Belgium. I especially love the real period feeling of the novel, which brought me straight into post-war Britain. A time with steam trains with restaurant carts, porters carrying suitcases, Egyptian ancient sarcophaguses and a decaying state house, Rutherford Hall. This was my first Miss Marple read and it kept me glued to the page chapter after chapter. The way she makes you suspect all characters and still surprises you was brilliant. Thank you for picking this book. It was a great seasonal mystery read. Oh, thank you, Maria. Yes, thank and you, Maria. I loved all of those details Just as well. Just the same, and yeah. So glad this was your first Miss Marple book and that you enjoyed it. That's yeah. really wonderful. But yes, talking about the time period details, this is such a post-war novel, don't it you think? It definitely is. It definitely is. And I think people don't always associate Agatha Christie with the post-war period as much as with the interwar period don't yes you say? I think that's so true I perhaps partly because of the TV series like the Poirot there yes. was such an art deco, deco. feel and to of all course of them. the really great Poirot books one could argue were written in the 20s and the 30s many of them yes at least were. yes yeah, okay. yes so, Miss Marple came later Yes, she did. Mm. Uh, I think it's interesting that she came when Agatha Christie was more mature herself. Almost the same age in some ways. By the Not time quite, she was I young. don't think. No, perhaps but that's she, unfair. Yes. <laughs> she, she, she grew to, <laughs> to become yes, Miss Marple's age. But yes. Yes, yes. Uh, but yeah, she certainly was quite a lot older, yes. obviously, than when yeah. she first invented Poirot, which featured in her very first book. He yes, did. yes. Um, but yes, so I think you don't always associate her with the post-war time period. And this was something I really enjoyed reading about in Lucy Worsley's mm. biography. Mm. And I really recommend the TV series on BBC it was that brilliant, goes wasn't with it. it. Yes. Yeah. Because Lucy really made the point that Agatha Christie was very much a writer of her time and that she reflected the changing times. And she actually moved with the times in which she lived. She did. In some ways, she was quite a modern writer. Yes. We don't think of her, of course, no. as like that now. But Lucy, in many ways, is a modern character, isn't she? Yes, I think she really mm. is. Mm. And I think some of um, Agatha Christie's own complaints about the era sometimes creeps into her works too all of the references to rising taxation <laughs> yes, and taxes yes. there's quite a lot of that <laughs> yes, in this yes. book and another reader Vanessa noticed this as well and she sent in a great message so let's hear from Vanessa Hi Miranda, hi Donna, hi all fellow readers, Happy New Year. This is Vanessa from Prague. Having one of Agatha Christie's book as a choice of the Comfort Book Club was a treat. I enjoyed three things especially, the irony in it, like when Lucy receives multiple more or less veiled marriage proposals, the character of Lucy Isles Barrow, specifically her being a woman freelancer, the way we think of it nowadays, and the third thing that I really liked are the personal references that Christy puts in the book when she talks about the tax rates on income having increased, something that she was experiencing herself. And this is something that I learned thanks to you, Miranda, and your advice to read Lucy Worsley's late biography about Agatha Christie. Oh, thank you, Vanessa. Thank you, Vanessa. I'm so glad that you enjoyed Lucy Worsley's biography of Agatha Christie, too. I do think it's such a good read and so interesting, too. A lot of insight. Yeah, a lot mm. of insight to the books as Especially, well. Especially, yes, I really thought so. Enjoyed. Yeah. 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 Um, and yes, I think reading it as a sort of post-war novel yeah. is a very interesting perspective to have on the book. Even as we were talking about the traditional country house mystery. Mm -hmm. This isn't that, I would say. No, I agree. It's that country house is in decline here, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it really yes. is. You kind of see it in decay yeah. and a new world rising yeah. and coming. And in fact, Lucy 
in the book um, has a great quote about the house, um, about Rutherford Hall, because Miss Marple is talking about how Rutherford Hall is isolated, its, geographi its geographical position is isolated, it's cut off from its surroundings by all of the railway lines. And Lucy says it is exactly like that. It's an anachronism out of the past. Bustling urban life goes on all around it, but doesn't touch it. The tradespeople deliver in the mornings and that's all. And you see this about Rutherford Hall, that it's something from the past that really isn't going to survive very well in the modern times. Yes, and, and definitely Cedric is, start, is talking, isn't he, about he is, selling it? about selling it, that it yeah. would make a good school or hotel, a hotel or yeah. something. You know, yeah. the, the home isn't going to stay in the family. No. And trying to keep it like this old family home makes it an anachronism. It does, it does. It really does, and I think, you know, that I the Christie with her own family and her own things mm. a lot of their family properties didn't um, survive it all became very expensive to uh, yes exactly um, yeah. yes and she struggled with keeping a family home of course she bought an amazing country yes. house for herself yeah. in Devon in her later years but I think she knew how lucky she was yeah. to have that and how rare that was becoming and you see this house as cut off from the outside world, not just geographically, but you feel from society of that time. Absolutely. It's changing. Only the doctor really seems to visit, you know, yes. from the outside. In yeah, a way. all the trades people. All the trades people. People. It's like it's yeah. sort of it's isolated. Sinister. It yes. is. There's yeah. definitely this sinister feel to well, it. And that sort of all those um, sarcophagus, what do they call the them? Sarcophagus. Yes, yes. All of yes. those, all those <laughs> strange oh, things. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Definitely. And I think Agatha Christie does that quite often when writing about country houses. They might appear very charming from the outside, but there's always evil lurking within, <laughs> yes. beneath the surface. Yes. Um, which, yes, you always you always encounter so it's that. Sort of, an, and it's it's in contrast to you know Saint, in Saint Mary's Mead, Miss Marple's cottage is obviously yes. small, easily managed by one help and Miss Marple, and she obviously can't manage the garden so much anymore, which is frustrating yes. for her. But it's still quite contained and small and easy to run. It's yes. more modern that way. I yes. Think. yes, yes, yeah, that's yeah. true. But I would also say that um, the wonderful Lucy Arlesbarrow oh, yes. is also a real product of her time. And some of the readers have mentioned this already, how much she, she seems a real modern heroine. Yes. Um, she's uh, such a favourite, I think. Oh, she yes. is. I think she's, yes. she's fantastic. And I love how she uses the shortage of staff, the labour yes, shortage, yes. to her advantage. Yeah. She's got this amazing degree in maths from yes, Oxford or something. Yes, yes. But she she sort of is a, is like an entrepreneur. Yes, she, she creates her own sort of business. Freelance. And she's a freelancer, yes, yes. as um, Vanessa, I think, said. Um, but yeah, many people admired her character. Eloise sent in a message about how much she loved Lucy too. Hi, Miranda. Hi, Donna. This is Eloise from Surrey. Um, the first time I read 450 from Paddington, I was a teenager. I was growing up in Canada, and I was about maybe 14, 15 years old, and I absolutely fell in love with Lucy Islesborough. I thought she was the most fascinating character. She was strong. She There was nothing she couldn't do. She she was brilliant with the children, with with staff, with everyone. There was just something magical about her. Um, I was kind of sad, actually, that um, Agatha Christie didn't use her in more novels, because I think she would have made an amazing sleuth in her own right. Um, but to me, she is the star of this book, and um, it's just such a fantastic choice and definitely my favourite Miss Marple um, novel. So thank you so much for choosing it.
Oh, thank you, Eloise. Thank you, Eloise. I so agree. She's a marvellous character. I think we would all like to be a bit like Lucy Armstrong. Or have her. Or, ha or have Actually, one. Actually, I've, I've got pretty close here. <laughs> Probably a good thing. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, she and Miss Marple are just the perfect duo. They detective are. duo, aren't they? They are. They're wonderful. Yeah. And um, Christina also sent in a message about how much she loves Lucy. And I love that she imagines Lucy for the modern age a bit too. Uh, so let's listen to Christina's message. Good afternoon, Miranda, Donna, and all the members of the Comfort Book Club. I had never read 450 from Paddington, but I had watched the ITV episode many times, and I was very fond of the story. However, now I have understood much better some characters, in particular Lucy Ilesborough. The plot is wonderful. And Miss Marple, as usual, is superb from the beginning to the end. I would like to stand out two of my favorite things of the novel. First, Mrs. McGillicuddy's tenacity and sense of duty. And secondly, Lucy Islesborough herself. Oh my God, I would love to have her nowadays on YouTube with a homemaking channel and be one of her subscribers. I am sure he would be the queen. Thank you very much, Donna Miranda, for this marvelous recommendation. Bye bye. Oh, thank you, Christina. Thank you, Christina. <laughs> and yes, wouldn't Lucy be an amazing YouTuber? She'd she be really like the would. cottage core YouTuber yeah. <laughs> yes, supreme. Yes, yes. <laughs> so she'd be amazing. Yeah. And like Eloise said earlier too, I would have loved her to feature in more books. I wish she had. Like how Ariadne Oliver yes. crops up a lot in Poirot yes. and is quite a good foil to Poirot. Yes. I wish that Lucy and Miss Marple had yes. got together more. I think. I think it would have been wonderful. Yes. Yeah, it yes. would. Um, they really are the, the perfect duo and that's something that Laura noticed and really enjoyed about the book too. Hello Miranda, hello Donna. This is Laura from Italy. I truly enjoyed this book. The plot is incredibly brilliant with surprising twists. I particularly loved the way the characters of Miss Marple and Lucy are described through the story. Miss Marple is defined as a nerdily frail old lady, fluffy and withered in appearance, but sharp and shrewd inwardly. She is the demonstration that being old can be an asset, not an obstacle. Lucy has taken a first in mathematics at Oxford, but she is also a sort of angel in the house. She looks after everything and everybody. She investigates, she cooks, she falls in love. So two great women who are the key characters in the novel. Oh, thank you, Laura. Yes, thank you, Laura. <laughs> yeah, so enjoyed hearing your thoughts. Yeah. And it's true, Miss Marple is shown to be very frail. She's just had pneumonia or something yes. quite recently, yes. which is how she came to know Lucy, yes. because yes. she looked after her. She can't garden the way that she used to. But she doesn't allow her own physical frailty to stop her. No. Instead, she sort of marshals her forces. <laughs> she does. I love that bit. Yeah. Who can I use? She yeah, thinks. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yes. And I love how, how this show is a lot of female support, this yes, book. Yes, it does. Um, which I think is really wonderful because, yes, I think Angatha Christie was very aware of how easily dismissed older women could be. Yeah. Um, this shows both older and younger women really coming together and solving a mystery Absolutely. between them, Absolutely. Um, which is so good. And I always picture Miss Marple as being almost a bit like a general of an army, yeah. marshalling <laughs> yes, her yes. forces, yeah, planning true. it all out. Yeah. Uh, but Madeline sent in a message saying how she thinks Miss Marple would be like a great office manager <laughs> <laughs> nowadays, which I thought yeah. was so funny. So let's hear Madeline's message. 
Hi Miranda, hi Donna and all the members of the Comfort Book Club. I am Madeleine, a French reader from Caen in Normandy. In this book, Miss Marple is mainly in the background. In a way, it reminds me my everyday work and I think Miss Marple has all the skills of a good manager. She pays attention to her friend's story. She knows how to delegate missions to Lucy and be like a mentor, cheer up Inspector Craddock and be there in crucial times. And so she leads the team to success at the end. Thank you so much, Miranda, for this choice. Oh, thank you, Madeline. Yes, thank you, Madeline. That's super. Yeah, I think that's so true. I do really love the women in this book, and yes. I think um, obviously so many of our readers did too. Yeah. I did. I was a little disappointed that no one mentioned Emma at all, though. Because I know. I actually we have really a soft like spot. Emma. Yes, and of course she's left at the end with. A very hard lesson to have had. Yeah, I she mean, is. God forbid it would have been worse if, you know, he, she, he, Miss well, Marple hadn't caught him. But yes, exactly. Yes. Yeah. But I love the fact, so we're talking about older women being very easily dismissed, like yeah. Miss Marple and Mrs. McGillicuddy. Yes. Um, but middle-aged women, yes. single women, who aren't young and attractive like Lucy, are also very easily dismissed, like Emma is. Um, she's really underestimated. She is. Miss Marple sees that. But Miss Marple mm. sees that. Yeah. Um, well, for instance, her brothers tend to dismiss Emma. Oh, she'll never marry now. Or maybe if she does, perhaps a parson. You know. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Marple sees Emma for who she really is as a yeah. very competent and I think yeah. quite confident w woman, yes, even if I in a quiet so. way. Yeah. And she thinks that. In fact, Emma will marry later in life and make a real success of it. Yes. And I love that she pictures Emma uh, at the end being able to afford to go off and travel. Yes. And Miss Marple suspects that, you know, she'll maybe meet someone on her travel. Oh, I'm sure that will happen. Yes. Miss <laughs> Marple, Marple is always right. right. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, so I really liked how much female solidarity was in the book and actually yes. represented and competence too. and competence yes yeah. yeah um like emma's a really competent character yeah they all just are. you know she manages her really difficult father oh, yes yes um, very serenely yes she's not a downtrodden woman no. in the home no not even though sure. she's quiet um i think that she has self-confidence. Yeah. So you see these different generations, young Lucy, middle-aged Emma, and elderly Miss Marple. Yes, yes. But they all support each other. They do. And I really love that about the book. Now, it's interesting because, as another reader, Gina, noticed, Miss Marple really does stay very much in the background mm of the story. She's not a detective that's very present at all. And she receives a lot of her information secondhand um, from people like Lucy, who she's yes. engineered to <laughs> be in the front line, so to speak, um, which is really interesting. So let's hear Gina's thoughts. Hello, Miranda and Donna. This is Gina from Pennsylvania in the States. And I absolutely adored 450 from Paddington. This was my first Miss Marple book, and I found it very interesting that unlike in several sleuth books, whether the sleuth is professional or amateur, that sleuth is typically more in the foreground in the plot and the storyline, whereas Miss Marple was very much more to the background, observing, listening, and even getting details secondhand from the character Lucy. And I thought that was a very interesting point that Christy made, and I wondered if it was also meant to be a commentary on how older women are invisible. But I also loved the character of Lucy. I thought she was a wonderful compliment to Miss Marple. So once again, thank you very much for this entertaining and wonderful read. 
Oh, thank you, Gina. Yes, thank you, Gina. And it is so interesting, mm. that point, because when you think of some of my favourite Miss Marple, and if you haven't read them, you have to read The 13 <laughs> Problems. Oh, the short they're, stories. Yes, yeah, they're absolutely. so good. I mean, mm. no, people don't talk about what a good short story writer Christy yeah, is. Yeah, I agree. And she mm. is, to me, one of the very best, yeah. just up there with Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Oh, yes, the, you know, yeah, the ability to write them. And in those... The whole story is presented to her second hand. Mm -hmm. And yeah. she gets everything from the telling. And yes. I find that fascinating that it's very similar in this. There isn't, all right, she's there at the Dimnumont, yeah. but she isn't actually um, running around herself hitting those goals. Yeah. yeah, no, she really embodies the detective who can just sit in an armchair and solve the mystery yes, from the armchair. Um, but yes, I, I do also think that uh, Christy was very aware of how much older women like that could be overlooked and mm. underestimated. And she really subverts that in, yes. her, in her novels, which yeah. I really appreciate. I think she also enjoyed later in life being a bit mysterious herself. Um, she could, she told a story, I think, about overhearing some women discussing her and one of them saying, oh, you know, Agatha Christie, she's a terrible drunkard or something like that. <laughs> Drinks course, like a fish. Yeah, because <laughs> she was teetotal. Yes. And she, she really enjoyed kind of hearing that and the fact that she kind of could move around society without being recognised yeah. at that time. Yeah. Um, and I think as she, you know, grew older as well, she came to associate herself with Miss Marple yes. a lot more. yes. Um, so I think she put a lot of herself into Miss Marple. I think you're right, yeah. Um, which is a lovely idea. It is. Um, but something that we've always talked so much about is yeah. the very end of the novel. Oh, yeah. And the question of who will Lucy marry? Yes, yes. <laughs> and we'd love to hear your thoughts on this. A couple readers also sent in their opinions on this, which I will share. And we think... We have maybe got the answer. We think so. Yeah. Yeah. But we'll save that to the end. Let's yeah. hear from Victoria, um, who sent in her opinion about Lucy's future. Hi, Miranda and Donna. This is Victoria in California. I'm sure going to try to squeeze this in 45 seconds, but not sure I can do it. Anyway, the book was a marvelous read, and I couldn't crack the code. Miss Marple had to solve it for me, even though it was my second go-round with the book. But I loved the Crackenthorpe family. Christy creates a group of really disagreeable and dissolute and spineless men that I just love to hate. And then there was the very appealing young Alexander Eastley, trying to convince Lucy to marry his father. And speaking of Lucy, she was such a whirlwind of energy and intelligence. I loved that character. Still wondering if she'll end up with Cedric Crackenthorpe or Brian Eastley. Hopefully, neither. Anyway, Happy New Year. Bye-bye. Oh, thank you, Victoria. Thank you, Victoria. <laughs> thank yes. you for trying to keep your message yeah. as short as possible. I think it's clear from the number of people phoning in that yeah. it really does matter. <laughs> but yes, I really um, think that's very true that a lot of the men are not very appealing no. in no. this book. Um, and yes, perhaps Lucy should go for neither of them. <laughs> Um, Dawn sent yes. in a message imagining a very different option for yeah. Lucy. So let's hear from Dawn. Hello, Miranda and Donna. This is Dawn from Florida. It was great fun to return to the 450. Now at the age of Jane Marple, I can appreciate how subtly and cleverly Christie treated challenges that women still face. I love that Miss Marple was honest with herself, yet didn't let it stop her from what she felt was her duty to her friend and society. Lucy knows her own mind and worth, and I think her personality, as well as hints through the book, make the ending not so mysterious. My opinion is Lucy again makes an unconventional choice and marries a policeman. Thank you for all your vlogs, recommendations, and book club. I've enjoyed every selection. 
my best to everyone. Oh, thank you so much, Dawn. Thank you, Dawn. I, I love, love that idea. idea. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I, I like um, Inspector Craddock. I like, do he too. and Lucy would be quite a good pair. Yes. But also, she'd get to solve all the mysteries yes, she would. <laughs> for whatever she would inspector useful. she married. <laughs> <laughs> she would be. Um, but do you want to explain why we think uh, we, we have the solution? Well, it's a possible anyway. I've been reading The Secret Notebooks of Agatha Christie by by John Curran and that under the jottings which aren't very many of about 450 from Paddington Cedric is Lucy's future husband says yeah. Agatha Christie when yeah. she was planning the novel however she did sometimes change her mind she put things in these notebooks yeah. that she changed later so it's not in stone no. but I think there are clues through it yeah. that Miss Marple knows that it's Cedric that's caught her up. He's a bit of a bad boy. Um, you know, there's a lot going on there. I think she Alex, thinks of pigsties a lot. lot. <laughs> pigsties <laughs> yes. pop in her mind, in Lucy's mind a lot. And of course, she uh, meets Cedric by the pigsty. <laughs> exactly. And of course, Alexander, who mm. is so appealing. I mean, she isn't marrying Alexander. It would have to be the father, you <laughs> yeah. know. So there is that yeah, element yeah. too. So, but you said something very interesting about it. You said, no. She, Miranda was like, I'm sure, is it? And we, we realised that the original Joan Hickson production, which you'd watched very young, you know, yes, I'm sure, yeah. um, had very different... Um, yes, they definitely set like, Lucy up with Brian, Brian. In, in that TV show. And yes. I think I'd remembered that. And so I was just convinced that, it, of course, it's always Brian. Um, yeah. But when I came to read the book again, sort of having yes. this in mind, I did notice a lot more subtle hints that maybe actually it is Cedric. And we all know that Agatha Christie herself, I think, um, knew what it was to be swept off her feet, yes, maybe absolutely. by a bit of a bad boy, yeah. you know, her first husband. And he was husband. going to be very wealthy once they sold it. <laughs> well, <laughs> there is that. Yes, <laughs> yes. She wanted to reward Lucy. <laughs> yes. Well, we'd love to know your yes, thoughts. Who do us. you think Lucy ends up with, or do you hope she ends up with neither I of them? I think the modern approach might be a bit different yes. from Agatha Christie's, but obviously I in those so. days, getting, getting your heroine married was, yeah. <laughs> was a good thing. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, but yes, we, we would love to hear your thoughts on that. But anyway, thank you so much for the wonderful discussion. Everyone who sent in a voice message thank this you. time, it was so great to hear from all of you and of course next month we are doing the nun such by georgette hare bit of regency romance yes. for the month of valentine's yes, which i'm absolutely. looking forward to and then i have march's book to announce which i'm very excited about and that is a real classic the wind in the willows by kenneth graham <laughs> dropping all my books um i'm so excited yes, to do this one yes. for the comfort it is book a club. real classic isn't it it is it opens in early spring with mole spring cleaning his little <laughs> home <laughs> um so i'm really looking forward to that and hope you'll enjoy joining in with us in february and march but thank you so much again for watching. Extra big thanks to everyone who has pressed the super thanks button on my videos. Um, this week I've so appreciated all of your support, but I appreciate everyone who watches my channel. Do give this, do give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And I'll see you again on Sunday. Goodbye. Bye-bye.